So uh, you should also say please if you want to start. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the uh, kind introduction, Sarbo. And uh, let me share my screen. And this is here. Okay. Can you see the, my slide there? Okay. Yes. And, and you can hear my voice, right? Okay. So, um, so today's I'm going to talk about the uh, some relationships between uh, art and the technologies, right? And uh, well, you know, important thing is um, well, so my work is closely related to the artistic work. And originally, I wanted to be a, a oil painter, and uh, unfortunately, I gave up to be a professional oil painter, and then studied the computer science. And uh, you know, the, I'm creating the uh, this very human-like robot. But, but uh, I believe, you know, I'm doing a very similar things uh, to the uh, as the uh, artist, right? So the uh, important role of artist is to represent humanity on the campus, on the statues, on the something, right? But I'm doing the same things. You know, I'm trying to uh, represent the humanity on the robot and try to represent something about the uh, humans. So therefore, you know, the, the another um, goal of my study is to understand the essence of the human being. So I think we are sharing the uh, same question, what human is, okay? Um, therefore, I think, uh, you know, the, you can easily understand what I'm doing here and then, um, you know, we can share the many ideas, I believe, okay? So as a, uh, as a scientist, as an engineer, so this is what I want to realize in the futures. So human robot symbiotic societies, right? So near future, especially in Japan, our populations going down to the half of the current population. And the important things is, uh, you know, uh, to develop the more human friendly robot to support our activities in the daily life. Um, so the, our J Japan, we have a different situation from uh, European countries. Right? It is not so easy to invite the immigrants, right? And there are so many reasons. One of the strong reasons is uh, uh, language. Ran Japanese language is totally different from the other uh, languages. And then you know, and the, uh, the another reason is uh, uh, probably uh, cultures. The Japanese culture is also the very different. Therefore, the our solution is to develop the more technology, the more robots to support our daily life. Okay, so in order to uh, realize that kind of uh, um, robot society, that I have started my my project in two thousand, and I started with my project uh, started my project with this very uh, simple mechanical looking robot, and then I have improved the robot technologies in many ways, and this is also the very important. Uh, robots, yeah. and uh, this is also the uh, uh, another important robot, and uh, it's uh, called Android. So Android means a very human-like robot. Okay, so this is my copy. And so I'm using the uh, this robot for giving a lecture. So this is a very good, uh, very you know, the convenient robot for this um, you know uh, COVID-19 situations, right? And well. And, you know, so we can have a kind of a face-to-face -face conversations if we use the uh, Android. So anyway, so these robots are human-like, right? It looks like a human. So why do we need humanoid robots? This is a very important, but a simple question. So answer is also the simple and the, the human has a brain that recognizes humans. Uh, the ideal interface for human is a human. Therefore, the information media devices, such as talking rice cookers, should be at least partially human-like. And conversely, to understand humans, very human-like robots or androids are needed. Okay, so um, our approach is is called uh, you know the constructive science with intelligent systems. Okay. The, so past brain studies have found that human intelligence comprises elements of memory, computation, inference, learning, etc. You know, the challenge is the challenge is to identify how these elements can be put together for realizing human intelligence. 
the constructive approach that we are taking here will reconstruct robots and androids to model humans and use such robot and android to study the human macro level or meta level functions so this is important for the uh, you know low level uh, micro level functions probably you know that we can study it in uh, neuroscience and cognitive science but uh, you know the our brain activities are so complicated and uh, we 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 cannot easily understand the, for example the, what consciousness is and what emotion is right in the theater i think uh, you are facing to the uh, similar question what is a human emotion what is uh, you know uh the human the uh, presence right so you guys you are trying to represent uh, that kind of uh, uh important human the human aspect uh, the uh uh in the theater right so that is your role i'm think i think I, you know, i'm doing a very similar things by using the uh, android or robot i'm trying to understand the macro level functions such as the consciousness or such as the uh, uh, emotion right so and again so let me explain the our approach you know the our approach is uh, different from the uh, traditional analytical approach in the neuroscience and the cognitive science so we develop the uh, interactive intelligent robots by, uh, by using the, uh, uh, the the technology in robotics and some knowledge in uh, cognitive and the neuroscience. So, and if we can uh, simulate human macro level functions, so for example, the uh, uh, consciousness or emotions, then by using that robot, right? So we can deeply study about the uh, uh consciousness and the emotion okay so so the, this is the uh, our approach and um, so far in the robotics we have focused on the uh, mecha uh, me uh, mechanics and the manipulators and sensors and image understanding and the voice recognition but after this we need to focus on the these macro level cognitive functions for the humans and the robots both right so for example the intelligence um so today is many people are focusing on um uh, exciting about the uh, uh the um very quick development of uh, ai technologies but ai technologies are uh, totally different from the human intelligence so for example you know to uh, recognize the some animals like a cat or a dog you know the current ai need to have uh, Hundred thousand, more than that, hundred thousand pictures, right? But the, our brains, you know, our brain does not require the, such huge number of pictures to to recognize cat or dog. Maybe ten ten pictures are enough. That means you know the human intelligence is a totally different uh, from the current AI technologies. But of course, you know that we could have a human level image understanding functions and the voice recognition functions by using the deep learning and the current AI technologies. Okay, so the, uh, the AI technologies are very important as a first step to simulate human like intelligence. But after this, the, we, we, um, we need to really understand what the human intelligence is. And then the embodiment. Embodiment means the important importance of our bodies Okay, you guys, uh, you are trying to represent the uh, uh, world well, human presence by using the uh, body properties, right? The uh, body property or you know, the embodiment is uh, very important for the theater activities, right? Um, the here, the, what we want to study is um, the how the intelligent brain can use the uh, bodies and the how the uh, you know in the intelligent systems. Um, obtain the information and knowledge through the uh, interaction with the uh, environment by using the uh, own bodies. That is the embodiment. Okay. And then the multimodal integrations. Multimodal integration is, uh, is to use the uh, many ways for the communications. Okay. In order to communicate with somebody, so we, we need to talk, but at the same time, so we want to use the facial expressions, we use the uh, eye contact and gestures, right? So we're going to use uh, many modalities. How we can use the many modalities, right? So this is a very important question, and uh, it, it, well, this will be a, 
very important research questions for the uh, next generation robots. And intention desire. Intention desires. Well, the, for example, the autonomous driving system, we expect to have uh, autonomous driving system soon. So the, what is the autonomy? You know, the, uh, uh, in the autonomous systems, the how we can uh, decide the behavior, uh, the, you know, behavior, how we, you know, well, the, we can control the robots. So uh, autonomous system need to have uh, some mechanism uh, to control itself. That is the intention desired. Because of the intention desired, we humans, we can behave so autonomously, right? So if we expect the uh, robots and the machines and the cars, and they autonomously behave, so of course we need to implement the intention and the desires, right? So once we implement the intention and desire to the robot, so uh, we may feel the uh, consciousness through the interaction with the robot. That is a possibility, okay? So, you know, we don't know the, what consciousness is yet, but, uh, you know, in the next decade, I believe, you know, many uh, the uh, scientists from the uh, neuroscience and cognitive science and robot uh, robotics uh, to, uh, you know, is going to study, deeply study about the consciousness. And then if we can feel the uh, consciousness in the interaction with the robot, so we may have uh, more better social relationships with the robot, right? So we may have, uh, you know, the uh, uh, robot society, human robot symbiotic society in the near future. So this is my imagination. This is the, uh, my uh, uh, research directions. And um, this is the uh, uh, roadmap for the robot development. Now we are focusing on the uh, language teacher robot, order taking robots, uh, which has the uh, single human like functions. But so we are improving on robots uh, very much. And then, you know, that we are trying to have uh, uh, companion robots, uh, which has the uh, many uh, human like functions. And you know, I hope the uh, 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 we're gonna develop the companion robot, which can be our uh, friend, right? And so this is the uh, current state, right? So we have uh, these very practical robots already, okay? And I, I'm gonna show you the uh, maybe more concrete uh, the uh, video and the pictures later. So anyway, intelligence, embodiment, much model integration, these are fundamental. So once we implement the intention desire to the robot, and the robot will be a very human-like robot. And then so we may develop the uh, uh, companion robot, which can pass the multimodal Turing test. So what is the uh, multimodal Turing test? Okay, this is a very important test as a uh, scientific and engineering goals. And um, so much model Turing test is to compare the between a robot manipulated by a human operators and the autonomous robots controlled by a developed technology that by controlled by computers. Okay. And, uh, you know, suppose the, uh, we are talking with this robot, right? So this robot has a kind of a human, human like body properties and human like uh, well head and the bodies right and of course we un clearly understand that this is a robot but but you know and through the conversations if we cannot distinguish two cases one case is uh, a robot is operated by human operators and another case is a robot is controlled by computers if we cannot uh, distinguish these these cases, so that we recognize this robot can pass the multi model Turing test. It's a so human like, right? And so, um, of course, so most extreme Turing test is a total Turing test. Total means, you know, uh, that we cannot distinguish the uh, robots or humans, okay? But unfortunately, you know, we cannot, uh, uh, well, we cannot develop the robot with the same material uh, uh, as the humans, real humans, right? Material is, uh, material is different. Therefore, 
you know, I, um, even if uh, it is so human like, if we carefully watch, carefully watch the Android, when, uh, you know, almost all people can understand that it's not human. Therefore, you know, they, uh, it's quite difficult to pass a total Turing test. But uh, uh, if uh, uh, the robot can pass the uh, much more Turing test, of course, you know, that we can accept the uh, robot as the kind of uh, companion robot or our partner, um, the, you know, the friend uh, uh, as a friend, right, in our societies. So therefore, um, in, in my study, uh, uh, our goal is to make the, to build a robot which can pass the uh, much more Turing test. Okay, so what is uh, state of art? Uh, uh, state of art uh, of uh, the uh, conversational robot, uh, which has the intention desired, right? Uh, um, the most important challenge is, you know, uh, I was running the big, very big project. It's called the uh, Erato project. Uh, that is the biggest uh, uh, research found in Japan. Um, provided by government and, and you know my my goal was to implement the intention desire to the uh, very human like robot android uh, of course you know the uh, human mechanism for the uh, intention desire is so complicated right and it's quite difficult to perfectly simulate the uh, human intention desires but if we look at the adult humans so the we adult we recognize our desires right then you know the uh in order to satisfy the desire we can decide we, we can choose the intention and that intention can choose the behaviors the utterance right so therefore you know the uh, we have um, uh, employed this very simplified hierarchical structures for the intention desires and then um, you know, the, we have developed the, a very complicated system with, uh, with that consists of uh, many functions. So, and this is one of the important functions of a system. This is the interaction composers. Um, in order to develop the uh, very complicated the behaviors of uh, the autonomous robots and Android, you know, that we need to have uh, this kind of a graphical model-based uh, uh, editors. Uh, programming environment and this is the one of the important function for us you know, i think that this is also the quite interesting the computer program for the theater activities what we are doing here is that we are just sending a voice to the android and android is analyzing the voice and making the lip movement and head movement and the gestures so everything is autonomous, right? And probably this is a kind of a role of a theater director, right? Theater director need to specify the, how to move, how to behave, right? But our computers um, is, uh, you know, no, we have model, uh, we, we have developed the uh, human behavior model, uh, the head movement model and the uh, lip movement models, uh, the best on the uh, voice. And then, you know, the, uh, we are controlling the, we are generating uh, this natural human like move <laughs> uh, based on just a better voice. This is a fully important thing. <laughs> And you know, the she, this is the Android. She said, you know, yeah, 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 you know, nodding, nodding. And then, you know, the, she's rephrasing the, you know, the, but the human said, uh, I, I, I ate uh, curries. And uh, what kind of a curry did you eat? Right. So she's rephrasing, she's asking the question, but uh, she's not recognizing the, the, his utterance. Right. And she's just focusing on the important keyword and just repeating or just asking the questions. So this kind of attentive listening function is a very important for continuing the, uh, the conversations, even if Android cannot have a perfect understanding about the utterance. Hi. 
本当に必要なのかなって思うんですいや絶対に必要になる部分は結構出てくるとは思いますあ先に話していいですかはいあなたはどういう時にあなたはどういう時にあなたはどういう時にあなたはどういう時にあなたはどういう時にあなたはどういう時にあなたはどういう時にあ So, when I'm talking, someone did talk, right? And then I have to say that, may I speak first, right? So, this under also the same, the same, same things. And in addition to these, the,、uh, the human like functions, we have implemented the、uh, two d e s i r e to the, our Android. One is a personal desire, that is,、uh, that is for building the relationships with the、uh, humans. And the social desires,、uh, that is for the qualifying the relationships with others, right? And we human, we have,、uh, you know, the,、uh, we, we, we also have a personal and social desire, right? And we tested several behaviors for the Android. And finally, we reached to this,、uh, the, uh, the two desires, personal and social desires for the Android. And our Android is you know, autonomously behaving the, based on these two desires and results. And this is a fully autonomous Android, and the people can talk and fiber and,、um, with Android.、Uh, of course, we cannot cover the、uh, uh, well, you know, the wide. Situations. We need to focus on the limited situations, the limited,、uh, the, uh, limited role of the Android. This Android is sitting in the lobby of our research institute and talking with the newcomers, and, you know, talking with the visitors. right? So when we talk with the visitors, we don't need to have a deep conversation. s、right? and, and you know, the conversation is, is rather simple. Therefore, you know, we could develop this. Uh, uh, very natural、uh, conversational Android. So we are simulating、uh, the, sorry, Android in its own mood and the, and, and the likeness to the characters. At the same time, Android is observing human behaviors, so,、uh, utterance, and facial expression. <laughs> Uh, human interlocutor's mood and human, and if、uh, the human locutor likes the Android,、uh, you know, Android, so Android is estimating the,、uh, his likeness to the Android. And then, you know, the Android, if Android、uh, well considers, you know, the both of them are exciting each other. Uh, you know, the Android r e c o g n i z e that the relationship s、uh, between them is getting better and better. And then Android will propose to talk about the more personal things.、Right? So this is、uh, so natural.、Uh, Android、uh, is not recorded. Computer is So, uh, today's technology for voice speaking is very powerful. You can generate any kind of a voice、uh, by using the AI technology. So, probably we don't need to find it.、Uh, actor and actress for the, the theater near, near features. Well,、uh, you know,、um, they. Um, pro pro probably you know, we're going to mix up the,、uh, you know, the Android and the, the human s actor and actress. right?、Uh, the merit of、uh, uh, Android is that we can easily change the voice and, and, and we can easily、um, well, control the、uh, sophisticated uh, the behaviors, uh, well, uh, well, human like behaviors, right? because it's Android, it's program.、Uh, it, uh, you know, So, any kind of、uh, representation that Android can have.、Right? So, that is a merit. So, and then, so please remember that、uh, I was talking about the multi modal Turing test, and、uh, we have tested、uh, yeah. the performance of this Android with 25 people, sorry, 24 people. 
And the five of them, they say that this Android is, uh, you know, it's controlled by a human operator, but it is not true. This Android is controlled, perfectly controlled by computers, but the uh, five people, um, the, among the 24 people, they say that this Android, you know, controlled by a human operators, right? And they didn't have any doubt about that, okay? So that means, you know, that this Android could pass the uh, multimodal Turing test for the five people, right? So I think that this is a uh, 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 pretty good result um, for, the, for, you know, that we have uh, so many in the uh, people and then, uh, you know, the, the, we could convince the uh, uh, 20, uh, well, 20% 20 of people, right, perfectly, right? So that means, you know, that we can use uh, this Android. And if we carefully choose the uh, situation and the purpose, and we can use the uh, Android and this Android uh, in a practical way. So, um, more important things is uh, uh, through the interaction with this Android, almost all people could feel the uh, emotions and the consciousness and intelligence. So in the beginning of this talk, I mentioned about the, uh, uh, well, uh, the, my research goal, research purpose. So that is to understand what human is, right? By using the robot, I'm trying to understand human meta level, uh, the cognitive functions, right? So such as emotion, consciousness, and intelligence, right? And, and then I mentioned about the uh, our approach uh, that is a, a constructive approach, right? So, so and actually we could create very human-like Android um, uh, with which we can feel the emotion, the consciousness, and the intelligence. Right? Then, you know, the um, by using that Android, we can deeply uh, study about the uh, these things: emotion, the consciousness, and intelligence, right? So this is a very, and uh, uh, very very important things for us. Right? And uh, we, of course, we are improving the uh, our robots more and more. And the next, um, our current very important challenge is to develop the robot which can run in, in our societies. The problem of the adult Android, we need to give uh, adult level intelligence to the Android. And that is not so easy. Therefore, that we needed to choose the situation and purpose for the Android. But we don't like to choose the purpose and the situations for the robots, right? So the, from the beginning, uh, we want to use the uh, robot in a society. How we can do that? Our solution is the human like Sorry, uh, our solution is the Android. Uh, yeah, that is adult, adult, uh, adult, adult, uh, adult, 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 uh, the, the, there is the music of the, of the video that is covering your voice. Okay, 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 sorry, okay, so I will explain Please. again. So, so what I want to say here, you know, um, the ad if uh, uh, we use the adult Android, uh, uh, well, uh, we need to give adult level intelligence to the Android. Therefore, it is very difficult to use the uh, many situations in our uh, societies. But uh, if we give, uh, you know, the uh, child Android, child appearance to the Android, so this Android can ask any question to the people. So actually, this Android can walk around the environment and asking them their questions and gathering the knowledge and you know gathering the information about the environment about the societies. So this is called the socially developmental robotics. Okay, let me show you the uh, one more.
No, this is the, our campus. I mean, this robot is walking around the campus. So anyway, so we can use the uh, uh, robot technologies for supporting the uh, people in uh, many places, the public places, you know, some of the uh, uh, some schools and stations and the department stores and some elderly care houses. And so many, so we can consider the many, many application of these robots. And but the more important things, as I said, right? So we can, uh, well, we're gonna have uh, important, uh, we, we can have very important tools to, for understanding the meta level cognitive functions. Again, so they are intelligence embodiment, much model integration, the intention design and consciousness and social relationships, right? And, and uh, you know, by using this robot, we uh, uh, you know, trying to answer the uh, some basic and very important questions. Right? Yeah. So and the and for example, the one of the question is uh, what is a conversation, right? So, you know, the probably and this question is, uh, uh, well, you are also, you know, studying about uh, this kind of questions in a theater activities, right? So what is a conversation? What, you know, the, what is the meaning of a conversation? So we are deeply studying about the, uh, you know, the, this kind of uh, topics, you know, uh, by using our robots and um, this, uh, and the question is closely related to the uh, multimodal integration and social uh, relationships. So, but uh, in order to explain uh, this, uh, um, this research approach is, you know, it takes uh, many, uh, well, not that much time. And then, you know, today I will skip. And if we have a chance again, I will explain. And, and um, but I, I, I want to quickly introduce the uh, more advanced, the more interesting the our projects. It's a life likeness. We are trying to understand the life likeness by using a robot. So these topics are closely related to the consciousness and the much modern integration and embodiment. So and actually we can we can develop the, this kind of uh, a very lifelike robots. Right. You know, we have combined the very complicated the neural network and the very complicated the uh, mechanized uh, human-like robot. And we are generating these sounds and the, the movement uh, by using a complicated neural network. Okay. So um, if you access the YouTube with the keyword of Oluta, and, and you can download, you can see the more longer video to pre check it. So uh, the very interesting things is uh, uh, actually, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, the, the, we can feel the very strong, the life likeness and the uh, human likeness uh, by watching this, uh, you know, the, the orators, these robots. So what is the technical meaning of orators? And all the realized by a combination of a complicated, complex mechanism and complex the uh, uh, neural networks. Um, uh, as I said, you know that that, that it's a combination of um, uh, the mechanism and uh, the uh, mechanical stuff and the uh, complicated the computer network, uh, computer systems. And the question is, why does a robot whose mechanism and the purpose are different from living things that sometimes feels more human-like, life-like than living things. So this is a very, very interesting, important question. A robot with a complicated mechanism may be more biological and more human-like. So uh, I, I, I really think, uh, you know, the, the, like, uh, the, this kind of things. Right, and uh, which is more human, like which is more uh, lifelike. So, and uh, you know, the humans we have uh, some limited bodies, but uh, robot is not limited. We can have uh, any kind of uh, uh, the we can give any kind of uh, the function to the robot, right? So, 
So if you need, and if we need, you know, uh, that we can give the uh, three arms and the four arms and the longer arms and the shorter arms and, you know, it's so flexible. So we can give any kind of a voice to the, uh, to the robot, right? So robot can be a kind of a perfect actress. So let me show you. Let me show you another example. This is a combination of our complicated robot and the human orchestra, right? And the robot is uh, uh, conductors, but the robot is also the singing songs. And, you know, everything is generated by computers, right? <laughs> Shibuya, Keichiro Shibuya, he's an uh, uh, artist, he's a he, he yeah, musician, and he is quite interested in this kind of uh, technologies. Always, uh, you know, uh, the, the, we are working together. And our goal is to have, to show the, uh, some uh, uh, human evolution, uh, you know, the near futures. Well, you no, know, what, what human is? A human is, uh, is it's a, uh, uh, the animal supported by technologies. That is the difference, right? Without the technologies, we cannot define the uh, humans. The humans, we have uh, two ways of evolution. One is the genes, the other is the technologies, right? Without the technologies, we cannot define the humans. That, you know, um, we are tightly coupled with the technologies. Then, in the future, we're going to replace our bodies with the machines more and more. So, and then, you know, and even if we depress the, our body with the machines, we never lose the humanities. So if we look at the handicapped people so they, uh, uh, who are using the prosthetic arm and the legs, right? You know, so we don't care about the fresh bodies anymore. Right? Even if they use the mechanical arm and legs, right? they, they, they never lose the humanities. So we are extending, enhancing the human definitions more and more. And they, in the near future, we may have uh, this kind of uh, a mechanical bodies as a human, okay? But the important thing is that we, and, uh, well, uh, even if we have a mechanical bodies, we never lose the uh, humanities. And probably we can have a more strong humanities. We're gonna have a more flexible and a more, uh, how can I say that we can represent the, uh, so, uh, uh, well, actually, and our body is a limitation. It's a constraint, right? So we want to have a more flexible, flexible body, and we want to have a more flexible voice, and right. So and, and we we can break the constraints as uh, fresh bodies, and you know we can, uh, we, well probably we can reach to the next level of humanities. So um, so anyway, so we want to represent uh, that kind of a robot, advanced humans in our the uh, our world expo. Uh, in 2025. So that is our challenge. Okay. And so anyway, the question is what is life, right? By using the uh, this kind of a robot, you know, we can face to the, this very, very important questions. Okay. So so unfortunately I don't have enough time to explain you know, these things. That, uh, the, uh, we are tackling to the so many things in my lab. And the the, let me uh, well, and introduce the, uh, another important question. What is a robot? What is a human? So um, I want to introduce my theater activities uh, at the, uh, as the uh, uh, end of this uh, presentation. You know, um, almost 20 years ago, I uh, 
I, I made yeah, this robot theater yes. title is I work right so you know this is uh, collaborate work with uh, Hirata Oriza. Oriza Hirata, so he's a very famous theater director in Japan, France, and Korea. And the two robots are uh, acting with the actor and actress. You know. The robot was also the, I mean, you know, we, we could feel the very strong emotion from the robot. And then we made the more complicated robot theater uh, by using the uh, two was and the many people and the many actors and actors and then here we are using two robots right and this is a more longer uh, the theaters and then we have worked with uh, uh, French people and I think that these uh, these actors are famous in France and the title was the metamorphosis uh, you know uh, it's very famous stories uh, written by uh, Kafka, and um, you know, but surprisingly, I could feel the so strong emotion, and by watching the theaters, and uh, I think you may have. Well, I I couldn't find the YouTube of this, but uh, uh, well, uh, the probably you can buy the DVD or something. Sorry, I I don't I don't remember the exact how we can access to this the footage, but anyway, you know, this was so successful. I, I was very lucky to work with these people. So, you know, the uh, orchestra uh, is also good for this in you know, a mechanical looking robot, but uh, normal theater is also the very, very strong to representing the uh, uh, robot humanities. And um, so a couple of years ago, I have created uh, this, you know, uh, uh, well, the, the, he is a very famous writer, uh, great literary figures in Japan, everybody knows. And he, you know, he, he passed away 100 years ago, but we could um, develop his replicant here. And then, you know, that this android is always talking to the uh, uh, own literatures to the people, the, to the student, and the student is, you know, always the carefully listening to his talk. This is a very one of the important the application of Android, right? And then, as you know, that this is the uh, under the theater, and uh, you know, the war well, uh, uh, under the theater was uh, one of the you know, most important, most important activities for me. So, you know, we have uh, we traveled, we have traveled in many countries with this theater, and in in Europe and in the United States, in Japan. Uh, this is a kind of a flagship uh, theater. And, 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 and then, you know, a couple of years ago, the, and the, How was it? The, well, one of the, the our friend made the it movie. It seems like there are less on, and less people. Based on this theater, right? This is a movie, the real movies. You can buy the DVD, I'm very sure about this. Right? How was it? What? The town. It seems like there are less and less people. Hmm. I guess the evacuations are going to plan. So anyway, so by using these technologies and by uh, uh, the, with these theater activities, you know, the, uh, I want to change this uh, this world and I want to create the human robot synthetic society in near futures, right? So I think I know that we need to work together. So the theater activity is also important to, to deeply understand the human emotion, the human consciousness, to deeply understand how the people accept the uh, robots and android in the societies, right? So we need to do both, right? So we need to uh, the, uh, study about some basics in the science and engineering, but uh, at the same time, so we need um, to develop the uh, theaters for 
appealing the possibility of uh, uh, androids and robots. So thank you for your attention. Thank, so thank I, you so much. Thank you so much for uh, your presentation. It was really, really interesting. Uh, uh, I, I, we have 15 minutes for some questions. Um, you can just, uh, you know, you have a, a button in the direction for uh, maybe, uh, uh, let me, okay. Uh, yes, I see there are already some questions. Uh, but I want to just before I want just to put just just ask a, a short question <laughs> um, okay. about this uh, symbiotic society. I mean, uh, from my understanding, I mean we have a lot of uh, uh, building blocks already, uh, mm -hmm. like um, nice speech recognition systems, uh, uh, mm -hmm. interesting um, uh, image processing systems. Um, I, am, mm -hmm. I completely agree that we really miss uh, uh, the meta uh, metacognitive uh, functions, but on your opinion, I mean, do we really need this metacognitive functions to have uh, to have robots in our life? Uh, I mean, I'm thinking about uh, existence of the um, all the new virtual assistants as uh, Alexa mm -hmm. or uh, whatever, mm -hmm. uh, uh -huh. that actually they are starting to do some interesting, from my point of view, I actually saw them like a kind of Trojan horse that we are injecting in the house of the people in order to start mm -hmm. that, to let them accepting. Mm -hmm. But I mean, um, what I want to ask you is what is the missing brick? Is a point of technology? Is a point also of uh, maybe uh, expectation that we have from the robots, like we no, want no. really human-like stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, Most please. serious difference between uh, well, the uh, European people and the Japanese people. Japan is a totally different. We are really expecting to have a human-like robots. So we, you know, um, but probably the European people, do you want to have a kind of a tools, you know, the, so you consider the robot as a tool, but uh, you know in Japan we consider the robot can be our real partners. So, so we 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 have a totally different basic ideas. But I think in the near future I, we can share the uh, Japanese ideas more. The, you know uh, because uh, you know we're gonna use the more robot technology for our bodies, right? So we we may connect the, our brain to the uh, yeah, internet by using a brain machine inter uh, brain machine interface. So it's quite difficult to distinguish the human and the robot. It's so so mixtured, right? In such case, we need to accept the robot as our partner, right? So now we are talking, well, and and then another important thing is, uh, you know, uh, uh, well, our you know our visual information is quite limited. For example, I'm talking right now. Right, but there is a possibility. That I'm a robot. I'm. I may be an android. That that is a possibility, right? So more important things is the relationships, interactions. If an interaction is so human-like, so we can accept the robot as the partners. Okay, you know. The, so that is the meaning of a multimodal Turing test, right? So if uh, you know robot can have a very human like ability uh, for the conversation, you know, of course the people accept the robot as uh, conversation partners and as a uh, kind of a humans. Okay, so I, 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 you know, I really think logically robot is a kind of a tools, but uh, you know, the what's the difference tools and the partners? Okay, so how do you define the humans humanities? So that is always my question. So do you have any definition about, about the humans? If you have a you know, clear definition about humans, just let me know. No, nobody knows, you know, it's open questions, okay? Therefore, we cannot say that the robot is not human. Robot, robot is a tool, so, you know. But if we can have a, good human relationships. Of course, the robot and anything can be a human, our partners. We cannot define the human the based on the materials. Probably okay, so understand what I'm talking about. Thank you. Uh, Ganto. Yeah, thank you very much. Very inspiring. Um, 
I was uh, intrigued by the what you said about uh, motion generation of the Androids by voice. Uh, mm -hmm. And I was wondering if it's um, so it's, it's kind of a gesture generation, which would be mm -hmm. so, so uh, good to have. Mm -hmm. And um, I was wondering if it's based on voice or if it's based on text. Um, uh, it's a bo uh, you know, voice, actually voice. Voice has uh, many informations, you know, emotional ex the informations and of course the text informations. So we are using the almost all informations uh, the, uh, embedded in the voice. And that, that therefore, you know, that you know, we could have a, this kind of a very human, natural human-like uh, yeah. uh, movement, right? So, and yeah, uh, you know, the, 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 we are uh, the estimating yeah. the emotional yeah. state from the voice, yeah. and you know, the Android yeah. is making the uh, yeah. you know the facial expression yeah. or gestures. Yeah. Right? So, so voice uh, the contains a lot of information. Thank you. We have a question in the chat room from uh, Rowan mm -hmm. Su. Uh, Rowan, do you want to to yeah, ask you? Please speak. And so many, so many questions. Yeah. 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 Sure. If there's time, I'd uh, love to ask a question. Yeah, please. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Professor Ishiguro, for sharing all these pieces of works. Um, so my question first is concerning Alter. How do you envision this, uh, the type of alternative nonverbal interaction in, um, because you're experimenting with uh, in, in these directions. So how do you envision that in future social implementation? And how do you see um, this uncanny beauty of, of the robots? Um, a next question is, uh, yeah, That's if we have time. Uh, let's go there one by one, you know, the first question. Yeah, is, yeah, sure. Uh, then, well, tell me the point of the question. Oh, uh, I was asking, how do you envision uh, the nonverbal interaction of alters? Ah, okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Actually, you know, the uh, that is our focus. We are carefully studying about the uh, nonverbal in the uh, you know the interactions. So for the verbal interaction, we have a professionals from in in uh, uh, you know in the speech processing uh, the communities. And the language processing communities. We are in a robotics communities. You know, and my idea was to focus on the uh, non-verbal communications and the uh, eye, uh, eye movement and uh, you know, gestures and the, uh, the, uh, the uh, some facial expressions. Always, we were focusing on the non-verbal uh, the communications. We are carefully implementing that kind of function to our robots. That is the reason why our robot is so human-like. Of course, we need to improve on the more, right? But uh, you know, um, um, this or well, maybe more than ten years we are studying about that, and uh, you know, we we are uh, well uh, strongly uh, recognizing the importance of a non-verbal communication, especially for the uh, Japanese. So you know, you know, the, our language is so simple, but uh, we, you know, to, for example, the meaning of a gazing pattern. It's uh, so complicated for the Japanese, okay? And we, uh, therefore, the, we are carefully implementing the, uh, you know, the uh, well, sophisticated uh, uh, eye movement patterns to the Android, right? So, but, you know, the, of course we need to do the more. Okay, so what is the second question, please? Uh, yeah, um, thank you for, for answering. And the second one is that you mentioned um, a lot that studying robot is a way of knowing the humans. Um, mm -hmm. And you also mentioned there are mainly two types of agencies or surrogacy of the robot, which is teleoperation um, and autonomous interaction. Do you also see these two types of interaction models in humans? I see. That is interesting. Uh, one of the, my friends, you know, he is running the uh, companies. He is uh, developing the uh, very interesting device. It's 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 uh, the uh, combination of the camera and the microphones. Actually, we can teleoperate the person by using that device. You understand, right? So, you know, the, for the teleoperated robots, we can operate the Android or robot, right, by sending the message to the robot, right. So in you know, the same times, and we can do the same things for the humans. So if I speak something, and and then you know the, we, uh, the, I can control the other person's, uh, you know, the behavior, right? 
if I if I want, you know, they well they, we can they, well put some devices to the persons and they perfectly control the, his behaviors based on my voice. So that is also the, another possibility, right? So we're gonna have uh, you know the ne uh, next big challenge is to develop the avatar. The avatar is a teleoperated robot. You know, the my idea is to use to uh, by uh, by using these technologies by using my robot technologies. You know, I'm trying to develop the uh, human-like avatars, but uh, you know, my friend, you know, his idea is, you know, uh, um, to make the uh, human avatars, right? <laughs> to so probably understand what I'm talking. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's very interesting. Thank you. Yeah. yeah so. Uh, so Esther. Oh, thank you. Thank you, first of all, for your presentation. Really inspired me. Um, what do you think about the issue of gender, gender mm -hmm. ethics uh, in design of this project? Is something that you care about? Do you think about the gender? Okay. Uh, actually, uh, the, uh, well, as the uh, Android, you know, the, we have tested the reaction of uh, many, many kind of people to the Android. You know, best Android design is a female, adult female. Right, the, the child, child afraid of my uh, my appearance and facial expressions. Right, child does not, uh, and they, they don't like to talk with the uh, adult man. And well, of course, it depends on it depends on the uh, facial expression, depends on the uh, appearance, right? But uh, generally speaking, right, you know, the most acceptable appearance is the uh, adult female. The, and you know, the, for example, how about the boys, right? So almost all company are using the uh, adult voice, uh, sorry, adult uh, female voice for the uh, autonomous systems, right? So, the, so that is, uh, you know, the, uh, the first reason. But uh, of course, it's better to have uh, transgenders, quite a neutral appearance uh, for the robots, okay? You know, uh, so this is the, my solutions, right? You know, the, I have developed this, a quite neutral appearance for the and the teleoperated robots. Now, actually, everybody could accept the, uh, this robot. Therefore, you know, uh, I, so unfortunately, I cannot show you the uh, my a perfectly neutral transgender. Uh, well, how can I say that? Uh, but just neutral the uh, android today. But the near, uh, well, maybe just one month later, you know, the new android is coming, and and we cannot. Uh, uh, distinguish which is which, I mean, the man or uh, female or male, right? And, and so that Android is, is also the, so beautiful and uh, it's, uh, well, the, almost many people can accept that kind of Android. But this is the, you know, the, my previous version. This is a, so simplified. We cannot tell the age and the gender. But, uh, you know, my current project is to making the, you know, more human-like, but uh, genderless, the Android. And as the general platform for the uh, as avatars or for providing the various services in a real uh, you know, real world. Thank you. Thank you so much. We are uh, really in time. I don't know if there are like just a last uh, question. Uh, Pablo, do you? Yeah, Pablo, please. <laughs> Uh, I'm wondering if there, uh, if there are discussions on the ethics, uh, um, because uh, this sounds uh, quite shocking, actually, that, uh, that there are scientists trying to turn uh, humans into avatars. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to refer to the uh, Isaac Asimov's uh, <laughs> iRobot uh, yeah. uh, laws of, uh, <laughs> of behavior. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, yeah. Of, of course, of course, you know, ethics is uh, LC problem, LC issues are very, very important. I'm running the uh, uh, very big project right now, and one is the avatar project, the other is a fully autonomous robot project, and all, you know, the, I also have uh, big groups for discussing about the ethics, right? Um, but, uh, you know, the generally speaking, uh, uh, you know, the uh, people is going to accept the uh, more robot, more technologies. That's the human history. 
always we are talking uh, when we had the uh, new technologies you know people worry about the new technologies and people uh, want to discuss about the uh, technology new technologies but uh, always in human history we are accepting a uh, new technologies okay and uh, the, for example smartphone we discussed about the uh, use of a smartphones about uh, and discuss about the privacy issues the ethical issues of uh, uh, smartphone use but uh, you know the uh, well the today is everybody you know the, the, don't care so much about the privacy issues of smartphones so much everybody using it everywhere right so always it's you know and the escalate issue is uh, you know the um, it a kind of a trade off with uh, uh, utilities okay and the, we we don't have a, a very uh, useful robot yet and, and but if uh, you know robot is going to be a more important uh, the things for us right so we're going to change the uh, our ideas about the ethical issues in near features right that is our human history to accept the new technologies but of course it's in, what, what i want to say here is uh, quite it's quite important to discover about the uh, discuss about the ethical issues you know the when we are running the new project and especially about the human like robot project Thank you. Uh, yeah, there is uh, Su Yan. I think, um, I don't know, um, because this is interesting. Isabella, maybe we can take five minute, minutes more or we are really running late. Okay, okay, great. Uh, Su Yan Yang, please. Uh, yeah, so I, I have two questions, maybe they're relatively simple, um, but. Uh, so one question is that um, if I understood correctly that you use these um, child robots for the purpose of uh, not only interacting with humans, but also gathering knowledge, is that correct? Mm -hmm. um, and if so, like to what extent do, the, do, do you control the data or knowledge um, that, is uh, that is gathered by the robots? Uh, actually, you know, that is uh, our new challenge. You know, we don't know the how how much knowledge we can gather by using these robots, right? So this is, uh, we just started this challenge and, uh, but, uh, you know, um, the AI, current AI, somebody need to gather the information, to gather the uh, data for, for train the uh, neural network, right? That is troublesome, right? And actually, you know, the, if we expect to have a more human-like robot, or more interactive robot, we need to gather the interactive data in societies. How we can do that? So my challenge is to use uh, this kind of a child robot, right? And, and, and train the child robot in a real society, right? So um, um, I, I cannot answer to your question right now, but this is, uh, you know, a uh, new challenge and, and you know i hope this idea works well <laughs> and, and yeah. uh, so for example like uh with chatbots sometimes it is a problem that people start like swearing at them and uh how and these um uh bots pick up these bad interactions between humans uh from humans and uh, repeat that to other humans like for I example <laughs> are those things also of concern to you we need to concern about that you know this is a child child is always uh, the carefully uh, listening the adult talks so if we have a bad adult right so in you know, a child may speak the bad things right so the responsibility is in the humans the adult so we need to be uh, you know the uh, the careful about that for training the robot and the child right and always human is doing a bad things the robot is not doing a bad things the robot is just copying the human right so and uh, uh, the, by developing a robot, you know we need to be a more moral person, right? So and the robot, so that that is my idea. You know, always the human is doing bad things, right? The robot is not doing bad things if we give a, a proper computer program to the robot, right? But we cannot change the humans, right? So always human has some possibility to do the bad things. And I have one more question, if that's okay, yeah. which is going to be okay, a relatively short one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I see that like the Ibuki robots uh, or some other robots as well, like you haven't covered up the, uh -huh. the, the mechanical parts of some right. robots, but with other mm -hmm. robots, you have made sure that they, those parts are not exposed. And this so, is yeah, like this, a this is curiosity. The, uh, you know, 
Yeah, well, this is the, our the challenge, which is better. You know, if we can have a perfect human-like robot, of course, you know, we, we want to cover everything and we want to put the uh, uh, human-like skin for the bodies. But unfortunately, you know, the, uh, the we cannot, well, for example, we cannot give the uh, bipedal mechanism to this Ibuki, right? Ibuki is going to have uh, driving wheels. That is, you know, that looks like a robot, right? So therefore, we we we, uh, we have decided to give uh, a mechanical body to this robot, right? But face is important for the facial expressions, right? Everybody understand this is a robot, but everybody can have uh, uh, interactions, right? So th th this is the, our design policies, and, and you know, in, in order to and avoid the uncanny body, right? So we, we are giving the mechanical body a very clear appearance as a robot. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Professor Ishiguro. Um, I think we can close here this, uh, this mm -hmm. first session. Uh, in At 11.15, there are uh, uh, all the other panels. There are the three panels. You have the links, I hope, uh, in the email for joining uh, the three panels. Um, now we will do a 10 minutes pause. And I would just want to thank you again, Professor Shiguro, for, for joining us, for giving, the, uh, for giving us uh, this talk. I can see in the chat there are uh, the links for the panel. Um, so Professor Shiguro, thank you so much again for, uh, for your, for your, uh, for your talk, you. for your inspiring talk, and for the questions uh, you answered. So, uh, so yes. Yeah, do you expect to me to join the uh, panels? Um, I mean, if you know. want, uh, we'll no, be no, more no, than I, happy. I, but sorry, I have another appointment. Sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, we we already wrote about mm -hmm. this. We may. So yeah, yeah. Don't worry. Don't worry. Um, mm -hmm. I understand you your, that your schedule is very full. And again, thank you for for joining us. Everybody, thank you very much, and I'll see you someday. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, I, I hope so, I hope so. Bye. Uh, so let's meet in 10 minutes. Bye.